Burt Kreischer plays himself in the movie The Machine that just came out recently, and this is not the first time at all that celebrities have played themselves in movies. In fact, it's a very storied uh, tradition. It happens all the time. And so what I wanted to do today was just rank some times in movie history where celebrities have played themselves. Now, this is by no means every time that this has ever happened. So if I forgot anybody that you think is the best or the worst, please feel free to put it down in the comments below. I'd love to read those. And maybe we can rank some more of these down the road later. We're going to start at the bottom of this tier list with that F tier. And there's only going to be one on my F tier, and that's going to be Al Pacino, uh, specifically him, in the movie Jack and Jill. The movie itself, not great, uh, pretty bad, uh, but his performance in this is just, I don't know, something else. It's definitely memorable. I'll give him that. It's definitely something that you will remember. That's going to take us up into the D tier. With D tier, we're going to start off with Lance Armstrong. This is uh, in the movie Dodgeball and something that I would have put a lot higher until, you know, it came out that he was a great big cheater and had been like lying about that for so long. And his entire scene is just about him not giving up and everything. And it really just rings the most hollow. It almost kind of makes things even funnier now, knowing that it's completely disingenuous, everything that he's saying to Vince Vaughn's character. So... In the D tier, I'm also going to put Matt Damon and Ben Affleck from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I don't know. It's just one scene that they're in. It doesn't really add anything to the movie either. I mean, outside of the laugh, which, to be fair, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back, that's pretty much all you're looking for. And then the last one in that D tier is going to be LeBron James. I would have put him down in F tier because of Space Jam New Legacy, but he is in Trainwreck and he does a pretty good job in there. Pretty funny scenes. And so it's going to pull him up out of the, the bottom. Now we're going to move into that middle tier, that C tier. And this is where I'm actually going to be putting Burt Kreischer uh, in the machine. I like the version of Burt that's in the movie more than I like the version of Burt that's in podcasts and in his stand-up specials and everything. He's a lot more well-rounded. Now, maybe this is more like real Burt. I would hope so. But I find the stand-up version of Burt to be kind of insufferable, really, is what it comes down to. Which is not true of the people who really enjoy his stand-up and uh, enjoyed the movie The Machine, uh, which I found in the comments of my uh, short little review that I did. I'm also going to put Bruce Willis from the movie Ocean's 12 in here. It's a really fun scene. If you've never seen these movies, Julia Roberts plays a character in the movies. Uh, but in the movie, they're like, hey, you look like Julia Roberts. Why don't you pretend to be Julia Roberts so you can distract people while we're doing this heist stuff? And so while she's pretending to be Julia Roberts, uh, she meets the real Bruce Willis in the movie. Maybe the most like excited I don't know if I've ever seen bruce willis to be in a movie like look at how much he's smiling and everything i'm also going to be putting keanu reeves from the movie always be my maybe in here again he's not in it a ton it's really a fun version of himself uh, i don't know if a lot of people really even saw this movie when it came out it's on netflix uh, but i recommend giving it a look and, and especially the scene it's it's pretty funny we're going to round out the c tier with david hasselhoff from the spongebob squarepants movie again a very good scene, very memorable. I, and, you know, for a, a whole generation of kids, I'm sure this is the first time they were introduced to David Hasselhoff. I would maybe put it a little bit higher if it weren't for the fact that there are some really, really creepy, like, dummies and big, like, models of him that they used in this movie that I find concerning. The way that his pecs move apart as <laughs> he's getting ready to shoot SpongeBob and Patrick down to the bottom of the ocean too. Again, a little worrying and not my favorite, but you know, C tier though, oh, happy to have him right there. Now we're up to the B tier, next level. Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie, The Last Action Hero. So in the movie, The Last Action Hero, kid goes into the movies and he's hanging out with the, the movie character that that uh, Arnold is playing. But then eventually they come out to the real world and we see the real Arnold Schwarzenegger. And the scene between his character and him, though really short and everything, just is a lot of fun. Arnold has never been somebody who it seems that hesitates to kind of like make fun of himself. And so, you know, it's not a big surprise to see uh, this kind of a scene play out with him in it. Next up, I'm going to mention Michael Jordan in the original Space Jam. Is Michael Jordan a great actor? No. Is Space Jam a great movie? As much as it hurts me to say, no, not really. But it doesn't mean that it isn't memorable and fun. There's a reason that a whole generation of kids, even those of us who weren't particularly into basketball, loved this guy. And then in Zoolander, we've got Billy Zane, who is being Derek's like pretty much hype man. I love it. I love every scene that he shows up in. Uh, and yeah, it's just beautiful. And I, I think that Billy Zane also is just such a product of the time. I think we should see more Billy Zane. I think the Phantom underrated. If you haven't seen it, 
You probably don't need to watch it, but I, I enjoyed it a lot as a kid. The only character from a TV show that I'm going to mention here is going to be James Vanderbeek from the show Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. He plays himself, who's kind of like, you know, that famous entitled version of a celebrity that you would expect. I just like when these celebrities are just poking fun at themselves. And this is definitely one of those roles. So, yeah, gotta love this one. And then finishing out the B tier is going to be Neil Patrick Harris from the Harold and Kumar movies. Really rejuvenated this guy's career, right? He had been Doogie Hauser up before this happened. And then all of a sudden he's playing this crazy womanizing version of himself, which I can't like help, but guess helped him get the, the part of, of Barney in How I Met Your Mother, which again, then took him to another level. He's just insane. It's not as much of a surprise to see him playing this kind of a character now, if you only know him from more current things. But back in the day, man, this was uh, not expected. That's going to move us up into the A tier. And we're going to find another dodgeball character, and that's going to be Chuck Norris. He's got like the tiniest role imaginable playing a judge at the end of the dodgeball game. But I think it's great, super memorable. And again, just kind of taking somebody who was really past their prime and just kind of reintroducing them to like, a whole new generation. Now for a personal favorite of mine, Tom Jones from the movie Mars Attacks. Man, I just adore this entire performance. Playing himself, coming in, being the guy who knows how to fly the plane, uh, and then just the ending of this with him being out in the wilderness and all the animals flying up to him will always make me laugh. The hard cut to black on his face and everything before he starts singing is just so good. Then we go to Stan Lee, the master of cameos, right? But he's playing himself in the movie Mall Rats. We get a great scene between him and Jason Lee, uh, just kind of bringing some wisdom and some heart to everything, uh, but with, you know, still fitting in with the crazy world that that movie is and really just kind of laying that groundwork for him showing up in i think like everything that showed up afterwards would we have gotten all those cameos of him in the marvel movies if he hadn't done this one in mall rats first i don't know but you know i think it would have been a lot less likely we're gonna round out a tier with bob barker from the movie happy gilmore again by just showing up and being something that we're not expecting from this person who all of us at the time knew because we'd all been homesick. We'd all seen the prices right. And then being this guy who just lays waste to Adam Sandler uh, until, you know, the tables turn a little bit. I mean, it's just a such, such a good scene. And I think it's a good use of a celebrity playing themselves in that they come in, they subvert the expectations of what we think we're going to get. And then on top of that are just very funny uh, in their scene. In the S tier, all of these ones are really going to play into more than just one scene of the movie. They really got to be a part of the heart of the movie. And so we're going to start off with John Malkovich in the movie being John Malkovich. There's a part of this building where if you go in this door, you go into John Malkovich's head and you like take control of his body. This movie is crazy. If you've never seen it, uh, which I imagine a lot of people my age and younger like probably haven't. I definitely recommend it. John Malkovich has to do so many different performances as himself, as other people, uh, and then like scenes where there's multiple of him and everything too. It's just crazy. And so it's easily in that S tier. Pretty recently, we had Nicolas Cage playing himself in The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, and that's S tier also. Uh, he's bringing some sincerity in there, along with like some of this over-the-top stuff. Seeing his relationship with Pedro Pascal's character also play out and be really great. Just oh, so fantastic. And if he wasn't in S tier already, the fact that he loves Paddington 2 by the end of the movie, it's going to get him up there. Paddington 2 is incredible. Next up, Heather Langenkamp from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, though she only plays herself in one of those movies, New Nightmare. This movie is so meta and in such a creative way that we had not seen up until that point. So in this movie, what's going on is the people who made the original Nightmare on Elm Street movie are kind of being terrorized by an actual dream demon. Uh, it's just so good and she gets to play this version of herself where she is you know actually running around and doing all of this stuff that ties in directly to this thing that's so influential to her it plays into how much being in the original movies just kind of changed her whole life as well it's really well acted and i think super deserving of being this high on the list and then my highest ranked one out of all of these is going to be bill murray and that's because he gives two super great performances where he plays himself in Zombieland and in Space Jam. Zombieland shows up, great scene. He's 
made up like a zombie. They stumble into his house. We get a ton of fun interactions with him and um, all the different characters. I don't want to spoil anything that happens in there, but man, it is so funny. But even more so than that, Space Jam is Bill Murray's movie, in my opinion. Like He is sprinkled in it throughout the whole thing. Every time he's there, you know you're going to get great jokes, um, which completely feed into like the idea that we would expect of, from Bill Murray in real life. It's just a ton of fun and just fits in perfectly with everything that the movie is trying to do. And so there it is. That's the list that I put together. Again, let me know if I forgot anybody, especially if it was something really good or really bad. You know, Don't forget to subscribe if you like tier lists like this, if you like talking about movies. I love doing that on this channel and I uh, hope to see you uh, on our next video. See you later. Bye.